Hello, welcome to the studio. This week I'm going to be showing you all my burnishing tools. So carrying on the series from last week, um, I'm going to show you all the things that I use basically to apply pressure to the back of the paper, either evenly or not so evenly, to get a print onto the paper. If you like the video, then please do click like, subscribe to the channel. There's lots more to see at ruthander.co.uk, including self-paced video courses all about how to hand print. So here are some of the tools that I have used in the past to um, burnish the back of my, well, burnish my print, which is basically pushing, applying pressure to the back of your paper to take a print, to lift the ink off. Um, and you can do that in a variety of ways. This is the this is the joy of it, really, um, that you can, this is one of the variables with hand printmaking. You could take it, you can press onto the back in a very smooth way, um, a consistent way, which is what these barons are for. And this is a baron too. Um, or you can use other approaches, and this wooden spoon might be, uh, represent some of that. So this would be when you, press onto the back of a piece of paper with this, it will be a lot less consistent and smooth. You'll probably get marks. Um, you know, it just won't apply an even pressure. That's quite nice. That can work really nicely. So it depends what you want. The spoon is also great for if you're um, printing, say, a collagraph. So maybe a plate with um, some, some sticky uppy bits on it, or even perhaps if you're printing with um, leaves or nature objects, this will get right into all the little crevices and cracks that you can't get into with something like this, which is essentially just applying a very flat uh, pressure. So I'll start off with what I use most of the time. Now, this is a baron. This is a speedball baron. It should be absolutely clean. It is not, as you can see, it's had many years of good use and it's still going. It's still not broken, so really hard wearing. This is a sort of metal, um, sort of almost like a netting. Um, and underneath will be a coil of some, uh, probably twine, I should think, that just keeps an even flatness. And this is a really sturdy handle as well, so you can push down and you can apply a lot of pressure. I also really like this because it's got a nice edge to it. So you can actually use it by pushing that edge down into um, cracks and crevices. You can apply more pressure with that. That will apply quite a bit of pressure as well. So it's a, so it's a sort of multitasking tool and I, I really like it. It should be clean, like I say, but it's not completely. These are different versions of the same thing. So this is a traditional Japanese baron. Again, it's been used quite a bit. Um, I really like them as well. Again, you just slip your hands in and then that's the flat surface. It's got some twine underneath causing that lovely um, sort of even pressure. And you just, and this is what would have been used for woodblock prints back in the day in the Edo period of, of Japanese woodblock printing. Um, so really nice. Um, the only thing about them is that they do they don't last so long. So they t start fraying around the edges. And um, I think this is bamboo leaf, I think. Um, it frays around the edges and then that will you will see that when you press on, if, especially if you're using thin paper, it will make marks on your print. Having said that, it's not too much of a problem because these are really cheap to buy. Um, I think I get mine from greatart.com online, um, but you can get them from lots of places, um, particularly online. Uh, they're quite cheap. They're basically biodegradable, so not too much of a problem when they wear out. I often bring these along to workshops. And then this is another one that I found, again, online, actually. This is a piece of felt, thick piece of felt. So that's what your even pressure is caused by. Nice, hold, good handle to hold. I find it if you're really applying pressure, if, especially like me, if your grip isn't so good, this isn't quite as good, but it, it, it does the trick. Um, so that's one to try if you'd like to. And again, I use that one in workshops for people. Um, if you have a spare clean roller, that often works as a burnisher as well. So just rolling onto the back of your paper, but you do have to make sure that your roller is completely and utterly flat with no warping. And sometimes they do have warping that you might not realize. So that is one option. And then of course the traditional wooden spoon. So with that, you would be using the bottom of the spoon, a slightly curved area, and you would be going like this. And it doesn't create such an even 
uh, print but that may be what you want and it like I say it's really good for really getting in you've got an edge there which you can sort of really get into perhaps if you're using a little collagraph plate or something like that you can get into all the cracks and crevices and print those so it's really useful for that you wouldn't want something as flat as that when you're printing something like that so let's give them a go and I'll show you how they look okay so I'm just going to roll out a bit of this dark colour for you to see I'm just going to use this bright white paper actually do you know what I'm going to take some of this off because it's going to pick up lots of ink before we've even burnished at this rate let's try that okay so if I use um move you across a bit okay can I use this one down here I'm going to use my usual speed ball here. I'm going to use a spoon here. And the roller here. And you can see the difference there. So this is this one here. The next one along is my usual speedball. This is the spoon and this is the roller. So these ones are much more even, but obviously, as you can see, much lighter. I mean, I could have pressed a bit harder possibly, but much lighter. The spoon makes everything darker, plus you get these rather nice movement marks. And the roller, again, is not actually that even, although I do quite like this, um, the edges, you know, you could get nice graphic marks like that. So it just shows you the difference between the different um, um, burnishes. And one other thing I'll just quickly show you, of course, is you can always, if you have thin paper, you can always use your hands as well. You can use the heel of your palm or your fingers. And look, that actually burnishes really nicely. So there you go, those are my top burnishers for making handprints at home.